Hello everyone, this is Chris from Comic Tropes. So, we're three episodes into Marvel Studios' first Disney Plus show, WandaVision, and it's utterly unlike any of the movies or even the previous TV shows like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or Daredevil. The movies may wrap in influences like a heist movie or a political thriller, but are mostly big action films with plenty of jokes. The WandaVision show is holding back on the action and special effects, instead using each episode to evoke, in a very honest way, the American sitcoms of consecutive eras from the 1950s through today. This is mixed with a look at the dark underbelly of the idyllic suburban life, as you might see in David Lynch films like Blue Velvet or Twin Peaks. But it also draws from a wide variety of Avengers comic book stories. I don't have much interest in detailing the references and influences to TV or previous Marvel Cinematic Universe films, but I do want to speak to some of the comic books that the show draws story elements from, so that you can look into these books and make some of your own comparisons. Scarlet Witch originally debuted as a villain, working with her twin brother Quicksilver for Magneto in X-Men No. 4 from 1964. She was co-created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Shortly after that, she joined the Avengers in issue 16 from 1965, on a path of redemption. In Avengers 185 through 187, Scarlet Witch's powers are examined. The Elder God Chathon had marked young Scarlet Witch as a potential future vessel for himself, and had infused her mutant powers with magic. Vision debuted in Avengers number 57 from 1968 by Roy Thomas and John Buscema. He was designed by the robot villain Ultron, but betrayed his creator and joined the Avengers. Soon, he became romantically involved with Scarlet Witch in Avengers issues written by Roy Thomas. Vision and Scarlet Witch have been a couple in the comics for many years and got two limited series about their lives as a married couple in 1982 and 1985. The first series by Bill Mantlo and Rick Leonardi introduced the idea that Magneto was Wanda's father, which was a retcon of her original origin as the child of Golden Age superheroes Miss America and The Wizard. This origin was later retconned again in 2014, so that she is no longer the daughter of Magneto. The second series involves Wanda becoming pregnant and having twins, and the show seems to take the broad strokes from these comics. Episode 1 begins with opening credits showing Scarlet Witch, aka Wanda, and Vision in a wedding suit and dress, arriving at their new home in the town of Westview. Vision in a suit is visually similar to 2015's limited series Vision, by writer Tom King and artist Gabriel Walta. That story involved Vision building himself a synthesoid wife and children and attempting to live a normal suburban life. Story-wise, it doesn't seem to be a direct adaptation, but thematically and visually, it puts Vision in a similar situation of domestic bliss with hidden secrets at home. In the comic, those begin when his wife kills the villain Grim Reaper. In the show, it seems Vision and Wanda are being monitored. The house number on WandaVision is 2800. I haven't been able to find any direct references to comic book stories or an issue with that number, but generally, pay attention to specific numbers like dates and signs. Of course, the elephant in the room is not only how can this be happening, but how is Vision even alive? In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we last saw him killed by Thanos in the Avengers film. Well, in the comics, Vision has been destroyed and rebuilt, such as in the John Byrne Avengers West Coast run. He was also killed by Thanos in the original Infinity Gauntlet miniseries from the 90s, along with most other superheroes, but that was ultimately reversed. In the comics, Wanda's powers are magic-based, and she's been shown to be able to reshape reality itself. We'll talk more about that later. We soon see Wanda and Vision trying to remember why they marked a certain day as special on their calendar. It's strange that neither can remember, but the day itself is the 23rd of August, and if we turn that into a number, it relates to issue 238 of Avengers. That issue involved Vision waking up after being comatose for half a year's worth of stories when he tried to penetrate a force field that the villain Annihilus had placed around the Baxter building. Issue 238 also features the Monica Rambeau version of Captain Marvel, also known as Photon and Spectrum. Episode 4 confirms that this character is the same as Geraldine, who we meet in Episode 2. 
Vision changes his appearance to look human instead of like an android. In the comics, he began doing that in 1990's Avengers Spotlight No. 40, when he acquired a holographic image inducer and took on the identity of Victor Shade from time to time. The image inducer was originally invented by Iron Man and given to X-Men like Nightcrawler to allow him to go out in public without being stared at. Wanda gets a visitor, her new neighbor Agnes. Agnes appears to be much more aware of what's going on than she lets on. There have been many indications she could be a character from the comics named Agatha Harkness. Harkness in the comics is a powerful witch who mentors Wanda in her powers. That began in Avengers number 128. Agatha was first introduced in Fantastic Four number 94 by Lee and Kirby and served as a nanny for Franklin Richards, son of team members Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Woman. Hints that Agnes could be Agatha include her name and having a pet rabbit in the following episode named Senior Scratch. In the comics, Agatha has a son named Nick Scratch. She also mentions that her anniversary is June 2nd. That's the date of the 1692 Salem Witch Trials, and in the comics, Agatha was supposedly burned then. She got better because this is comics. Agatha also has a brooch around her neck, just like in the comics. The next scene involves Vision at a computation firm whose purpose is decidedly unclear. What's odd is that Vision is working at super speed. We'll see him use super speed in the third episode to grill hamburgers and to grab a doctor. In the comics and the previous movies, Vision does not have super speed, but Wanda's brother, Pietro, does. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, her brother was killed by Ultron. It makes me wonder if Wanda is controlling this world. If so, could she have brought back an element of her beloved twin brother along with her lover? At work, we also briefly meet one of Vision's neighbors, Phil Jones, who is being laid off. In the comics, there is a Phil Jones, who is married to Arcana Jones, a sorceress. She is part of the Squadron Supreme, a team of superheroes from another dimension who are mostly analogs of DC Comics superheroes. The show has a fake commercial for a toaster called the Toastmate 2000 by Stark Enterprises. Towards the end of the ad, it continues to beep ominously. To my mind, this could be a reference to Wanda's backstory in the Avengers Age of Ultron movie. She and Pietro say that they were trapped in a collapsed building next to a bomb that didn't go off, which was manufactured by Stark Enterprises. There are other references to Marvel films, but I'm sure most of you watching this can note those easily enough. Shortly, Wanda magically creates a dinner for their guests. The wine being served is labeled Maison du Mepris. If we translate that and shorten the name, it becomes House of M. That's a storyline where Wanda, distraught over losing her children, magically reshapes the world to an alternate reality where there are no more mutants, including the X-Men. It's a pretty major story. There are no mutants in the Marvel Cinematic Universe yet, but could this be a hint that the opposite could occur? Could Wanda reshape the world to have mutants? Too soon to say right now, but I'm positive this speculation will age perfectly. As the episode ends, everything gets meta. We see that Wanda and Vision are being monitored. As the credits roll, Wanda and Vision are framed in a hexagon. In the comics, Wanda's magic powers are known as Hex Bolts. On a related note, we can see that the monitoring station has the logo of a group called S.W.O.R.D. S.W.O.R.D. is a related organization to S.H.I.E.L.D., but in the comics, it monitors extraterrestrial threats. It was created by writer Joss Whedon and artist John Cassidy in the pages of Astonishing X-Men No. 6 from 2004. It wouldn't be a stretch to re-envision S.W.O.R.D. as an organization focused on paranormal threats instead of aliens. Episode 4 explicitly states that they were established to look for extraterrestrial threats, but also investigate sentient weapons, and that would include whatever is happening in Westview. Either way, the idea of S.H.I.E.L.D. monitoring people in an artificial reality has precedent in the comics. In the 2016 miniseries Avengers Standoff by writer Nick Spencer and artist Mark Bagley, S.H.I.E.L.D. was using the powers of a cosmic being to run a small town called Pleasant Hill. It was populated by captured supervillains whose minds were wiped to believe that they were ordinary suburban residents. It seems likely something similar could be going on with WandaVision. 
The second episode is full of twin imagery, including starting with Wanda and Vision sleeping in twin beds. Similar imagery appears in the 2015 Vision series, and Vision also seems to wear the same striped pajamas. The show moves into an animated opening similar to Bewitched. It features a hex pattern of stars, and Wanda and Vision arrive by the Westview sign. That reads, Home is where you make it, and this town does seem to be manufactured. The question is by who? In a blink and you'll miss it instant, Vision phases through the floor, and we can see something in the ceiling. It's the helmet of supervillain Grim Reaper. As I said, in the 2015 Vision series, Vision's wife kills him and hides the body. In the comics, Grim Reaper has a complex association with the Vision. Vision was created by Ultron using the brainwave patterns of the superhero Wonder Man. Wonder Man's brother becomes the Grim Reaper and wants revenge against the Avengers who killed Wonder Man in his initial appearance before he came back as a hero. But when Reaper learned that Vision was made based on his brother's brain patterns, he couldn't bring himself to harm Vision. The animated opening next shows us Wanda at the supermarket. The ads in the back mention Wonder Oats, which could be a nod to Wonder Man. The next ad is the deepest pull for this show. It says Bova Milk. In the comic books, Wanda and Pietro were raised by a mutated cow named Bova. She first appears in Giant Size Avengers number 1 from 1974, helping to deliver Wanda and Pietro. The final sign reads Auntie A's Kitty Litter, which is very likely a reference to Agatha Harkness, who has a black cat as her familiar. The second episode's story starts with Vision and Wanda preparing for the town's talent show. They are doing a magic act and using the names Illusion and Glamour. In the second Vision and Scarlet Witch series, they have neighbors who are actual magicians with real magic powers that use the codenames Illusion and Glamour. The cabinet that Wanda wheels out also appears to have an image of Vision's Infinity Stone. Shortly, Wanda hears a crash, and when she investigates, she sees a toy helicopter that carries the S.W.O.R.D. logo. Episode 4 confirms that S.W.O.R.D. sent in the drone into Westview, and Wanda's powers converted it into something that fits the era. It also has the number 57 on it, and, as I mentioned, numbers are always important. Vision originally debuted in Avengers issue 57 with an iconic John Buscema cover. Agnes shows up with Senior Scratch and her iconic brooch. She escorts Wanda to a meeting with the housewife running the talent show, Dottie Jones. This is the wife of Phil Jones. Is she also a powerful witch like Wanda and Agnes? Unclear, but she does run everything, and you could say she's the queen bee of the neighborhood. She seems to be aware of something more going on, and is later injured, and her blood shows up in color compared to the black and white world. Some fans have speculated she could be Mephisto, who is basically the devil in Marvel Comics. This is based on Dottie mentioning that the devil is in the details, and Agnes whispering to Wanda, that's not the only place he is. But I think that would be too much story to unpack on this show. I am going with a witch based on Arcana. Wanda attempts to get on Dottie's good side, and there is a minor confrontation. Mimicking Wanda's stress, the radio by them goes haywire, and a voice asks, Who is doing this to you, Wanda? If you've watched enough Channel 101 shows, you'll recognize the voice of actor Randall Park. In the movies, he played FBI agent Jimmy Woo in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Jimmy Woo debuted in the comics in Yellow Claw No. 1 from 1957 as an FBI agent. It was published by Atlas Comics, which eventually became Marvel Comics in the 60s. Jimmy Woo later joined S.H.I.E.L.D., and in the show, he's working alongside S.W.O.R.D., as we learn in Episode 4. The episode features a new commercial for a watch labeled Strucker. In the comics and movies, Baron Von Strucker headed up Hydra, whose logo is on the watch face. The time it's pointing to is 2.42, and in Avengers issue 2.42, Vision and Scarlet Witch rejoined the team. After the talent show, Vision and Wanda decide to take an evening walk. It's interrupted by someone coming out of the sewer. He's in a beekeeper uniform, and his body seems to be comprised of bees. Wanda rewinds time to avoid this, but the beekeeper is interesting. He wears a sword logo, but is portrayed as sinister. 
In episode 4, we learn he was simply a sword agent in a radiation suit, and when he enters Westview, his suit is transformed into a beekeeper suit, which is more aesthetically appropriate to the 60s era. Still, there is definitely some beehive metaphors in this episode, from Dottie being queen bee, to beehive hairdos, to this individual in a beekeeper suit. Wanda's show also uses hexagons like you'd see in a beehive. There was a Hydra villain named Hive, but he was used on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so I doubt they'll use him again. The episode ends with Wanda realizing she is quite pregnant. While that should be impossible, it mirrors what occurs in the Second Vision and Scarlet Witch comic series. The third episode shows us a new version of Wanda and Vision's house, which mirrors the look and colors of their house from issue one of their first limited series. In the third episode, Wanda goes through her pregnancy quickly. This mirrors issue number 200 of Avengers, where Carol Danvers, then Ms. Marvel, also went through an accelerated pregnancy. Wanda experiences Braxton Hicks contractions, also known as false labor. And this definitely appears to be an artificial labor, but one that ends the episode with Wanda giving birth to twins Tommy and Billy. In the comics, she and Vision also have twins by those names. Thomas is named after Phineas Thomas Horton, the scientist who built the human torch android, which Ultron turned into Vision. Billy is named after Wonder Man's last name, Simon Williams. Eventually, Wanda is revealed to have artificially created the twins by magically taking pieces of Mephisto's life force and creating new souls. When this is learned, the children cease to exist, which is part of what drives Wanda mad later in stories like House of M. However, the souls are eventually reborn in the form of teen superheroes Wiccan and Speed, because comics are never simple. That story is detailed in the pages of the first volume of Young Avengers. Wanda's powers seem to bring the house to life. At one point, she animates a butterfly mobile over the crib. In the House of M storyline, there was a young girl named Layla Miller who could remind people of what the real reality should be. She was codenamed Butterfly. Not a direct connection, but since the mobile could have been anything, that could be a visual reference to the comics. At one point during Wanda's false contractions, her powers animate the house. It surprises Wanda and Vision, and they jump into a dramatic pose. It's a recreation of the cover of issue one of the second Vision and Scarlet Witch series. Episode four takes place outside of Westview, and we learn that the FBI and S.W.O.R.D. came across Westview while looking for a missing person who was in witness protection. We still don't know who that person is, but it confirms that the town seems to be fabricated by Wanda herself altering reality. The episode formally introduces us to Monica Rambeau, daughter of Maria, who we last saw in the 90s set movie Captain Marvel. In the comics, she debuted in The Amazing Spider-Man Annual No. 16 from 1982. It was written by Roger Stern, with art by John Romita Jr., and she gained energy powers, naming herself Captain Marvel. When Jimmy Woo first arrives, the local police have a cruiser with the number 1966 on it. I can't find any important Avengers issues from that year that deal with Wanda, but that was the year that the original Ant-Man returned as Goliath, and Jimmy Woo last appeared in the second Ant-Man movie. There is later a sword jeep with the numbers 8512, which refers to the 12-issue Vision and Scarlet Witch series from 1985. Most of the people in town have been identified as New Jersey residents with different names by the FBI and S.W.O.R.D. Two characters not present on the FBI's board include Agnes and Dottie. And that's all I have for pointing out comics you may want to read if you're enjoying WandaVision and want to compare and contrast. If you like this video, I can always make more because there's six more episodes on the way. Thank you for watching, thanks for subscribing, and thanks for remembering to hit like. Keep reading comics!